Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. You are listening to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. 888-589-8840 is the number to call. 888-589-8840. Let's start the uh, segment with a phone call. Let's go to Jim in Spring Hill, Florida. Jim, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? I thank you very much for for taking my call, Brian. And yes, sir. I love your program. Thank you very, very much. I I would I would like to ask you how many people has Obama hired for Obamacare at this point in time, and how much are we paying them? And I say we are paying them. Yeah. Well, it, it's an enormous sum. It's an absolutely enormous sum. I think uh, I think a total of $167 million was set aside for these navigators. These are going to be the people that are supposed to help you navigate your way through the Obamacare thicket. And remember, these are the people that have no background checks, no criminal background checks, no fingerprinting is done. Kathleen Sebelius admitted last week that these people could be felons. She admitted it. To a Senate committee, yeah, they could be felons because we're not doing any background checks on these people, and they're going to have access to this extremely sensitive and personal confidential information. We know that the that, that Obama's union buddies, the SEIU, Service Employees International Union, they are getting all this money to be navigators. We know that Planned Parenthood is getting a whole ton of money to be navigators in various different locations. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it's... You know, it's basically crony fascism, Jim, is what it is, where President Obama has found a way to get our money, more of your money and my money, into the pockets of his union buddies and his friends at Planned Parenthood, and it's being completely and totally wasted. And I agree with that. It is completely wasted. Yeah. All right, Jim, well, listen, I appreciate that. Uh, 888-589-8840, if you want to join the program, 888-589-8840. Uh, uh, let's uh, grab a couple of um, sound bites. Why don't we go, uh, Rob, to clip number uh, five? Uh, President Obama very testy now about the fact that the the mainstream media uh, aren't fanboys of his uh, I- anymore. And here is Bob Woodward talking about maybe where that started. But the president's the CEO of the country and has to find a way to work his will. Uh, as you recount all of this, uh, and as I do, you, you, you see that uh, the president is the one who calls people to the White House. They don't call him to the Congress. And uh, but it's he's more got than, the hammer. It's more than being empirical. You, as an author, had to reach a conclusion. And yes. some people criticized you for that. That's and correct. Uh, I understand that even today, some in the White House are not that happy with Bob Woodward's report. Yeah, because they they said I started it. It was kind of the first time somebody sa- started this idea of uh, he's got a lead and uh, he's too passive a- at times on these budget issues. And is the and White House official who told you that accurate? Was the person angry? Are they blaming you for this? Well, they never are. I mean, as you know, no one likes to be uh, criticized and called out. But, you know, they they uh, deal with reporters. And you, you I, I, I think the temperature is going up right now, days, as there is more and more criticism on the president's comments on Obamacare that, you know, you if you like it, you'll keep it. And so Bob Woodward saying, look, the temperature is going up. The temperature is rising. I talked with you in the last hour about those 12 Democratic senators. I call them the train wreck 12. Remember, Max Baca said this thing is a train wreck. These th- these Democrats, I mean, trust me, ladies, and you have no idea of the level of panic now in liberal circles. This whole thing is melting down. When these numbers come out this week, assuming that we can trust the numbers, which I don't believe we can, but Kathleen Sebelius is setting the bar as low as she possibly can. These numbers are going to be quite low. Uh, Chuck Todd's out there telling us, or, or rather Major Garrett, uh, they are being set as low as humanly possible. So these numbers, even we know, no matter what they are, they are going to be absolutely dismal. They're going to be abysmal numbers. And so we know that people are losing their insurance, hand over fist, right and left, they're getting cancellation notices. Nobody can even sign up if they want to. And so the numbers of signups, we know what the numbers of people losing their insurance are. It's over three and a half million now that we know of that have actually got the cancellation notices. We know we're headed to 52 million or we're headed to 93 million. That's the Obama administration's numbers. Or we're headed to 129 million. 
which is American Enterprise, the number of people that are going to have their insurance canceled because of Obamacare, and they can't get new insurance. You know, and I've suggested the scenario we're going to have here is we're going to get to January 1, and people will be unable to get insurance. No matter what they do, they can't get it. They won't be able to because they cannot get on the Obamacare website. And remember, it doesn't do any good to do the to go the paper route because once they get the information on paper, they've got to take that information and go to the same website that you couldn't get on. So that's just absurd to think that that represents any kind of alternative route. You still got to go through the same front door. Nobody can get in. Nobody can get on. Now, by the way, one of the things that Obama is doing today is he's trying to pressure these health insurance companies not to cancel their policies because he knows what's happening. People are losing their insurance and they can't get new policies. So now President Obama is trying to order the health care companies not to cancel their insurance policies, but it is his law that requires them to do so. It's the Obamacare law that requires health insurance companies to send out these cancellation notices. Now, he's trying to get them, don't send out those cancellation policies, don't cancel their insurance policies, uh, when it's his law that requires them to do it. So it would be breaking the law if these insurance companies did not cancel these health insurance policies, they would be in violation of the law. Now, another thing that President Obama is trying to do is he's trying to find a way to get subsidies to people that buy insurance by going directly to a health insurance company. Now, right now, you can do that, but you but the law does not let you get any subsidy for doing that. This was part of the evil uh, intimidation or evil, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, how they're trying to force people, compel people into Obamacare. Uh, for instance, what they said to the states is, look, you don't have to set up an exchange, but if you don't set up an exchange, the people in your state will not be eligible for subsidies. And 26 or 34 of the states said, forget it. We're not going to sign up for this deal. We don't want to do it. We'll let you build a website and you run it. We don't want to tangle with this. And what the Obama people thought is, well, if they, if they know that they're not going to get any money for subsidies, if they don't set up a state exchange, then surely they will. The allure of the money will be too much for them to resist. Well, 34 states said, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to let you run it. Well, the law does not allow any subsidies to go to people that buy insurance policies on the federal exchange, on healthcare.gov. They're not, the law doesn't permit them to get any subsidies, and that was by design. The, the government did not want to have to set up a federal exchange. They wanted to force the states to do it, and the way they did it is dangle this carrot. You get money if you do set up an exchange. Your people get no money if you don't. So now the federal government stuck with running health care exchanges for 36 states with no authority to give subsidies. So they just made up a rule where now it's okay. You can get subsidies by going through the federal exchange, even though it's at flatly, absolutely, totally, completely illegal for them to do it. Now they're trying to do exactly the same thing with people buying insurance by going around the exchanges altogether. In other words, President Obama can see what's going to happen January 1, Somebody tried to get insurance by going to a state exchange or the federal exchange. They couldn't do it. Their insurance was canceled. They get to January 1. They are uninsured. They are uncovered. They've got no protection. They have a major medical event on January 2. They get diagnosed with cancer. They get hit by a bus. Kid falls off a trampoline, breaks a couple of arms. And what happens on January 3? Obama gets the mother of all lawsuits filed against the federal government. I needed insurance. I didn't have it. I tried, but I couldn't because of Obama. And the, the, we're going to see a litany of lawsuits like you have never seen in your entire life in the history of civilization. So Obama realizes the problem now that he's created for himself. So now he's trying to tell people, hey, just go get insurance. Don't mess with the exchanges. Go straight to the private insurers. Buy your insurance. And I'm going to figure out a way to get you a subsidy anyway even though there's absolutely no legal authority to give subsidies out to people that don't go through one of the exchanges, they can't do it. It's not authorized. That, again, was the whole idea. We don't want people dealing directly with insurance companies. We want them to go to the government. We want the government to be the portal for everything. 
We want the government to be the screen door, the front door. Everybody's got to go through a government portal. That's what they wanted because this is all about expanding the power of government. They did not want people going around the exchanges and dealing directly with private insurers. Well, consequently, nobody's going to have insurance. So now they're trying to break the law again by getting subsidies into the hands of people that go to the private insurer. So we'll see how all of that works out. Let's go to Joe in uh, northern Missouri. Joe, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, you know, Brian, suppose you just don't sign up for any of this junk. What ends up happening? Well, you will get uh, fined either $95 for the first year or 1% of your income. And realize, Joe, that the the IRS is given no enforcement authority. They cannot use a lien. They can't uh, arrest you. They can't garnish your wages. The only thing that the IRS can do to collect that fine is take it out of a refund that you are owed. So if the American people <laughs> calibrate their taxes enough to where they're not owed any refund, then th then people can dodge that penalty because the IRS has no way to collect it. But that's the deal. If you don't, if you just stay out of the system altogether, don't get insurance, you get a $95 fine or 1% of your annual income, whichever is greater. Now, is that for a family member? Well, you got me on that one. I don't know what the deal is on that. I'm assuming that's per individual, but. Yeah, because, you know, I've, I've got, we've adopted a lot of kids, so they have Medicaid, supposedly, for now. Yeah. Uh, but I have one child still at home, mm -hmm. and uh, she's going to be 19, but like you said, until the age of 26, we're supposed to be providing insurance for We're self-employed, and we can't afford insurance yeah. because it's too high. But I am considering going with MediShare, but they say MediShare is um, exempt from the Obama health care plan. Is that true? That is correct. MediShare, you can, you can avoid all of the hassles of Obamacare, every last bit of the hassles with Obamacare, can be avoided by going to MediShare. All right. So, Thank you. All right, Joe, appreciate that. Thank you uh, for that. Pat, Wilmington, North Carolina, hang on. We'll get to you right out of the break when we uh, get back. You're listening to Focal Point on AFR Talk, and I'm afraid Joe's experience shared by a lot of people. They, they're they self-employed. They have to have insurance. They got canceled. Now they're finding out they cannot afford what's available. Focal Point, AFR Talk. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Stay with us. 